Good evening, everybody. I'm Ling Ling from Aventis. Welcome to the preview sessions of today, London Metropolitan University for the Masters of Science in Psychology. Okay, so today we'll be covering the following topics. More information about London Metropolitan University. More about the course, the Masters of Science in Psychology. Why should you take up London Metropolitan Masters of Science in Psychology? The program structure, the program delivery, the program faculty, the application process, the grant, as well as there will be a short class demo. So welcome to London Metropolitan University. They pride themselves to be the best in London for teaching quality. And um, they, they have been recognized in the Times and Sunday Times Good University Guide 2022, where they are ranked best in London and six in the UK for teaching quality. London Metropolitan is also uh, dedicated to employment, employability to students. That's the university, it's QAA accredited research university in the UK. They have close to 10,000 students from 140 nationalities at the moment. Here are some of the rankings and recognitions for London Metropolitan University. It is a public university in the UK, recognized by the gov UK government. It is accredited by QAA, the Quality Assurance Agency for Higher Education in the UK. For this course, the Masters of Science in Psychology, it is registered with the Committee for Private Education in Singapore. It is ranked 10 in London, 9 in London for Criminology, and 12 in London for Psychology under the Guardians University Leaks Table 2022. And it is ranked top 10 universities in the world under QS World Ranking 2022. For the Masters of Science in Psychology, it is under London Med School of Social Sciences, whereby they, they have a committee of uh, discipline, which includes criminology, policing, sociology, psychology, politics, and international relations. For the London, sorry, for the London Metropolitan Masters of Science in Psychology, a lot of people are interested in psychology. We always think, sorry, I'm sorry. We always think about why does my brain do, how does my brain works in this manner? What makes me unique? Where do I fit? What makes me take? These are some of the questions we have always had in our mind. So through this course, you get to learn more about yourself and to understand why people behave in a certain manner. The Masters of Science in Psychology allow us to study more about our minds and our behavior so that we understand the complexity of being a human better. This is a one-year part-time course um, that caters for students suitable, qualified non-psychology graduates and is designed to offer a broad curriculum in the field of psychology. This is a one-year fast-track course uh, for working professional in the non-psychology background. It is the, also the only master's program in Singapore for non-psychology graduates. Okay. So these are the topics, the modules that are, that are being covered for this course. It includes connection, psy psychobiology, individual differences, developmental psychology, social psychology, research methods, as well as dissertations. The modules that you have can see with asterisks, um, in, which includes connection, psychobiology, as well as research methods, uh, there are examinations for these modules. The rest of the modules are coursework basis, whereby um, it's individual work. Okay. Okay. Okay.
This is the duration as well as the delivery structure. This is a one-year part-time course with six modules and a dissertation. Um, each module is delivered over two consecutive weekends online. It is delivered online through Zoom. Then classes are also recorded. So in the event that you miss a part of it, you can still catch up through the video recording. Um, classes will be from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. For Saturday and Sunday, there will be a short break in between from Monday to Friday before you resume the next module. I will share with you all of you on the schedule through email um, after the session. This is the faculty list that will be teaching the course. It includes Dr. Christopher Fong, Dr. Lim Kok Kwang, Mr. Anil Singh Sona. He will be doing a short class demo later. So you get to experience the course, uh, what to expect, and some of the topics that would be covered in the course. Um, other faculties would include Dr. Yip Y. Keen, Dr. Jonathan E, as well as Mr. Benjamin Lowe. For this course, it, uh, you will be getting the same degree as awarded on campus. So this is how the search will look like upon successful completion. Upon completion, if you want, if you are thinking uh, what to take up next, this course allows you to progress on to the professional doctorate in counseling psychology awarded by London Metropolitan University. So if you want to move on to take on this course, you can do so uh, with, universe, with London Met University upon completion of the Masters of Science in Psychology. Here are some of the career opportunities that you can look at upon successful completion. Um, students can look into areas which is in the civil services, in law, in marketing, communication, social services, psychology, education and research, as well as HR. This is the entry requirements for the course. Students will be required to have a bachelor's degree in any discipline with at least a lower class honors, a second class honors. If you do not have it, you are allowed to, you are allowed to go into this course by doing our graduate diploma for six months. Then at the same time to be eligible for the course, you need to have a C6 for your mathematics for your GCE O level. This will be the application process. If you're interested to join the upcoming April intake, you will need to fill out the application form, provide us with a copy of your updated CV or resume. Um, your educational certificate and transcript, copies of your NRICs, or if you are foreign, foreigners working in Singapore, then your local working pass. There will be an application fee of $214. Um, you can actually submit to us by visiting the campus or through email. Alternatively, this can be done through our website, whereby you can submit the application online as well. Next, I will cover on the cost fee. The total cost fee for this course is at 22,800 before GST. It is payable over four installments. For the upcoming April intake, you get to enjoy $3,000 grant. So the cost fee payable after grant will be at 19,800 before GST. Um, it will be payable uh, over four installments. The upcoming intake will be starting on the 16th of April. The application deadline will be on the 28th of March on Monday. If you miss this April intake, the following intake will be starting in October. Okay, if you would like to have more information about the course, you can drop me a message. You can actually uh, email to me or you can give me a call at this number. Okay. 
Okay. Now I would like to invite uh, Mr. Anil Singh Sona to give us a short uh, class demonstration. After the demonstrations, we'll come back with a Q&A session. So if you have any questions about the course or you have, uh, would like to have more information, just give me a, a call or drop me a note. Okay, uh, thank you, Ling Ling. And also, it's very nice to see um, 20 of you in here. Uh, very, very decent crowd in the evening. And thank you for making time to, to come in to hear some information. I know the information were, were brief and you probably might have some questions. Also, the uh, proximity of your registration period, you probably have what, about 10 days to make a major decision in, in, in life. Uh, sometimes decisions are dependent on quite a lot of things. So we do know that um, it, it's not a very straightforward decision. Cost aside, a lot of people focus on, on cost. Uh, to me, anything that's four figures and above, you know, and you're talking about and $20,000, uh, it's, it's also a commitment in its, its own way. So do let uh, Aventis and Ling Ling know if you have any um, queries, you know, on, on, on these things later. And I'm sure Aventis would be able to, to provide a consultation if you need to. <clears throat> okay. um, for the next maybe 20 minutes, I, I would just like to do a, a little demo, you know, a demo in the sense of uh, giving you a feel of how we may conduct our lessons. Uh, disclaimer, I think the, my colleagues and I, those who teach this course, I can vouch for them. Uh, many of them are, are in the field. They have uh, current practical experience. Uh, they, are, they are clinical psychologists and you know, they, they are actively practicing now. Uh, then you also have some um, who, who, like me, may not be practicing, but very experienced in terms of the pedagogies and, and, and the lecturing, of course, uh, having the subject matter expertise and so on. So we've got a few modules and, and, we, and what Aventis does is to, to match the modules clearly and carefully to the, the faculties, right? To, to ensure that they are the right people to, to take you through. Um, if you ask me whether this is going to be an easy ride, um, I would say yes and no. So that's a very ambiguous answer. Yes, because I think if you are interested in the area of psychology, and you are currently at a stage where you, you want to move into something else, uh, that kind of motivation you can't buy. Right? You need to have that intrinsic motivation to do a postgrad course. It's not about I need to do this because my boss say I need to, to uh, level up or I need to move on to the next stage. Uh, I, I, I don't think it comes down to that. There must be something intrinsic. Uh, in you that you want to move on to something along the area of psychology. It could also be you still want to stay in your organization, but you feel that having the psychological knowledge at this level would be beneficial in terms of uh, credibility, maybe enhancing certain programs and also advocating certain things like say mental wellness. It's, it's a really hot topic these days and people are all jumping on, on their bandwagon. So there could be various motivations for you to, to want to do this. Uh, no, because you may not have, well, you don't have any prior psychological knowledge. Some of you may go through that six months uh, program. Uh, you will find that it, it is a level up. Some of you have not been in the classroom for really long. You may have concerns over things like academic writing, how do I do citations and references and so on, right? Uh, incidentally, a few days ago, so I'm going to be conducting an academic writing workshop for confirmed students. Uh, and this is before you start any module, we're going to provide a, a workshop for students to understand the bolts and nuts of academic writing. Along the way, I think the lessons are designed, you know, uh, sufficiently to give you 
scope to be able to give you guidance and and for you to execute the assignments and the examination. Of course, we, we feel a bit worried about things like examination and so on. I would just like to assure everyone that we've we've been through two runs. So we've got two batch of two batches of students taking the course. And uh, tough as it is, we we do get them ready and we give them the guidance within our boundaries so that they remain confident in, in preparation. I think there's no easy right, but what I can assure you is uh, the level of guidance that we give. So these are some considerations that you probably have. Mm, classes, we hope, are supposed to be on face-to-face, uh, -face, right? Uh, given the situation and so on, there's still some ambiguity, so we, we can't uh, be fully sure whether classes are going to be physical or, or online. That, that could be a, a question or concern with you. You can explore that with, with Ling Ling later. I think regardless of whether it's it's face-to-face uh, -face or online, the faculties and I will ensure that our delivery remain productive in a way. Now, of course, the medium is very different, right? Like right now, if you look at it, this, this is just a, a briefing session and I'm a, I'm a very real person, right? So I, I think over the two years, learning meetings on Zoom and all this, it has relegated to a situation where people get a bit of, of behavioral fatigue, you know, with things like turning on their cameras and so on and so forth. So online learning does have its advantages, I feel, but it also does have uh, some disadvantages in the sense that there's, there's not much connection physically. And you might think that, hey, you know, I'm, I'm more of an old school learner and so face-to-face -face is more beneficial for me. If you think that way, you're also not wrong. I think face-to-face -face has those benefits where you, you feel more connected with your lecturers, your, your fellow classmates, and the engagement that you get uh, is quite different from, say, online. Nonetheless, at this level, there's also a, a degree of independent learning. So it is possible to still be engaged and do well for the course, even if it's online learning. So I think I want to assure everybody that because there, there, there are pros and cons to both mediums. Uh, I'll, I'll try to take this opportunity to just give you a bit of an insight of how I conduct the classes. As mentioned, you know, different lectures have different styles, but more or less we're, we're kind of there. I'm just going to do something really simple by uh, giving you a, a little short introduction to what psychology is. Just give me a minute, I'm going to share my screen. Right, just a, a little short introduction and, and you know, to, to show you how, you know, in online lessons, we, we, we can try to engage students in, in a variety of ways as well. Right? So uh, here we go. Again, it's just a demo. And then later I do have uh, some, some quick questions where you can chime in with some inputs too. Uh, as Ling Ling mentioned earlier, I think psychology is a, a fascinating discipline, right? You go and Google uh, a diploma in political science or a diploma in engineering. Well, yeah, you have. It's in the polytechnics and all that. Uh, you Google a diploma in psychology, you get a lot of hits. You know, uh, I think part of the reason is because it, it's not a discipline where you can suddenly come in uh, at the degree level and say, okay, I think I can do it. Of course, there are some programs that allow you to come in, but you need to have some uh, at least background or you may have a first degree in something else. So you need some level of rigor. But subject matter wise, psychology is very interesting primarily because it deals fundamentally with the individual first, i.e. the human. Right? It's not that other social sciences don't deal with humans uh, or the individuals. However, they are more focused with dealing with bigger things first. Right. So personally, I'm also trained in sociology. As a sociologist, I'm quite interested to understand the education system and how our education system is competitive. And based on the competitive nature of the education system, how it has resulted in uh, extra worries for parents, students getting academic stress, etc. 
and then you go right down to the micro part of things, then when, when people get more stress on the ground, then the question here is what kind of, of behaviors do they engage? You see, as a sociologist, I would come from a macro perspective down, right? Because I'm concerned with the social structures and how education systems work. A political scientist will look at this whole thing and say that, hey, you know what? Um, this is about education policy. So based on the problems that you identified with academic stress, uh, parents, you know, being too, having too much expectations, can we have some policy initiatives or measures to uh, review how the education system runs? So for example, if I have to scrap the streaming system, right? Recently, Education Minister Chan Chun Singh announced that by 2023, there will not be any more mid-year examination, right? So when I was reading it, I can imagine the kids screaming, yeah, you know, done away with exams. You know, I can imagine that, right? But these are all policy shifts. Now, a psychologist is also concerned with policy matters, with how the education system is structured and so on. But we are more concerned, I would say, with the individual's approach and engagement with the bigger environment around us. Right? So we start with the individual and ask, how does this individual behave in certain circumstances? Right? If there is a policy shift, what's the perception like on the ground? How do people think and feel about changes around them? And how do they cope with these changes? Now, a misconception is that, oh, psychology only studies the micro thing. So we are only concerned about the thoughts and the feelings. And then after that, we don't do anything else. Uh, that's completely untrue. I think we complement the other social science disciplines. right? So to, to understand at the micro level how individuals and families think, it helps us better understand at the population level uh, what needs to be done to change certain attitudes, to cope with certain behaviors and so on. So if you don't have ground sensing, you don't understand people's thoughts and emotions at the ground level, how can you be certain that your policies are going to work? Right? Clearly some policies have not worked, uh, not only in Singapore, but in many other countries. But I think psychology covers quite a lot of things, but fundamentally it's about humans and everything about humans. And so that's why there's an appeal to it. Right? Uh, of course, some may be appealed to psychology because they say, oh, you can read my mind and you suddenly become a mind reader, right? Well, we do study the mind. Psychobiology will look very closely at brain systems, parts of the mind. It's very abstract. However, it gives you an appreciation of the, the, the mechanics behind thinking and, and feeling. Right? Uh, incidentally, tomorrow I have a, a module with uh, the second batch of students. It's called Cognition and Emotion. Uh, sorry, Cognition only. And, and we look at uh, everything from uh, decision-making, bias and thinking and so on. So you, you, you really get a full flavor of how psychology functions at, at, at the practical application level and also the abstract level. Uh, I shared earlier, psychology is a social science and I deliberately highlighted the word because psychology is applied as well. So there are two wings, right? One is clinical, where you work with patients, you do research, so the clinical aspects of things. Some of you may want to get in there. But then there's also the applied area. Right. So someone like me who's not clinical would be more applied in the sense that I look at psychological principles and I say, how can this be applied at the workplace, for instance? Right. I just got back from a, a training with, with Aventis Learning Group, a uh, two-day certified mental wellness uh, coaching training. And I, I use quite a bit of positive psychology principles in helping the learners understand how to coach positively. That, that's an example of an applied uh, area of psychology. Um, criminal and forensic psychology, there's not much clinical aspect of it, but we use psychological principles to get into the minds of the offenders. 
right? Uh, even in the field of, of terrorism, for instance, we are quite interested to understand why people do what they do. You know? So I think as with all social sciences, psychology applies the scientific method to study human behavior and, and human society. Um, you know, just a very, very quick little video here to just engage everybody. Uh, we have a bit of time, so I'm just going to put this link in the meeting chat. I'm going to share my screen with you so you can adjust your volume at your end in case it's too loud or too soft. Wait for the last part where Dr. Syke, this uh, little guy here at the end, comes in and he says that, hey, you know what? All of you social scientists, you study really interesting stuff, but and then you wait for after the but. Nah. Okay, so I'm going to uh, share my screen. Just give me a minute. I'm going to load it up. Get rid of all the advertisements. Today, everybody wants to be a star on social media. They pay to advertise. Okay. Um, share my sound. Here we go. It's just a short little video of about four minutes or so. So let's go. All right, if we're all settled, <clears throat> yes, well, good. <clears throat> Welcome, we are the social science department. Now I'll get right to it. The question on everyone's mind, just what the heck is social science? Well, let me try to explain. Social, as in society, as in human beings. Science, as in the facts, the systematic study of a thing the pursuit of its true nature. We seek to understand the nature of people and society. What does it mean to be human? What defines a person? Is it history? Is it ancestry? How has he worked, struggled, thrived? In his environment. Sorry? In his environment. Did he live on a mountain or in the desert or near the sea in the Arctic? Ancestry is important, but location is paramount. <clears throat> That's all very fascinating, but I have a question. What is this person like? Is it a man or a woman? What's her race? What does he or she do? Well, profession relies greatly on geography. The natural resources that exist here. Proximity to natural resources is fine, but what about proximity to other people? The sociological element is undeniable. What happens when he feels the influence of other human beings? Then, how will he behave? What will be expected of him? Will he fulfill these expectations? Now it's a collection of people. It's a town or a city. It's a community. Hmm, community. But who's in charge? Whoa, 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 whoa. We need structure. Leaders. Hey, everybody, check me. Several leaders if we can. Oh, that's better. See? When we organize, we give our man a voice, an identity within his society. This is where his ancestry and his geography and his social interaction come together. The political realm. Ah, but it's the true nature of man, witnessed only in his interaction with the world around him. I ask you, where do his actions begin? With a thought? And where do his thoughts originate? The brain, madam. The brain. Good doctrine, is it only his experience in society that informs him and shapes him? Or, or is he born this way? Every cell and synapse forming just so, making him the man he is. He is interacting, sure, buzzing around a busy bee in the hive of society, sure, sure. But his inner being, his motivations, his thoughts, his feelings, his hurt, his joy. This will be largely unknown, unless, my doctrine, we study his psychology. 
Well, very intriguing, Dr. Syke. Thank you. So, as you can see, we social scientists cover a wide range of topics. But we all agree on one thing. People and the societies in which they live are a fascinating study. All right. Uh, thanks for watching that little short video with me. I uh, just wanted to pick up on, on, on certain things. There was a re reason why I, I, I decided to show that, apart from the fact that it's, it's to, to let you know that psychology is uh, also application-based, because I, I would think that many of you would want to do psychology because you want to apply it somewhere. Right? Now, if you look at the first guy, the anthropologist, the geographer, the political scientist, and the, uh, sorry, and the sociologist and the political scientist, all that they have mentioned are very relevant areas of study in society. But I think how the video was organized is that when we are so drowned and lost in all these technological, economical, engineering kinds of solution, today when you have a problem, you look for some of these you know, evidence-based stuff like economics, engineering, architecture and so on. So all these things are like the first things that come to mind, right? Because there is some, there is some concreteness of the, the, the solution to the problems. But what about psychological solutions to problems? Are they not good? Is it because they are very fuzzy? What if we apply psychological principles and we are able to come up with solutions that are more effective? That's one. Number two, Dr. Syke here reminds us that ultimately, we need to go back to the individual to ask ourselves, why did he do the thing he or she did? Why did he think the way he or she thinks? I think, I think these are very crucial, right? So for example, huh, I can have laws in society. And these laws are very clearly communicated to everybody. You know the punishment, you know everything, you know how prisons is like, or you may not have know what prisons like, so life is like, but the point here is you have information that committing a crime will result in a punishment. Now, the more interesting question is why do some people obey the rules and why some people don't obey the rules. Because the assumption here is that if I have laws, if I have a system of punishment, you are going to play ball. Great, I can understand that because the law is a deterrence. But why is the law not a deterrent on, why is the law not an effective deterrent to some individuals? One example. Second example, we all get angry. Angry is an emotion. Aggression is an action. It is fascinating to understand why someone would become aggressive. And so we can attribute to the feeling of anger and how the person processes the anger. As much as the question of why people get aggressive is interesting, I would like to think that the question of why people don't get aggressive is also interesting. By understanding why some people conform or why some people violate rules, why some people are aggressive or better managers of their emotions, uh, we, we can devise better measures, systems, and policies to improve society. So psychology is clearly relevant. And if anybody says psychology is fuzzy logic and so on, uh, I would like to have coffee with them, but not Starbucks or whatnot, just the normal coffee shop kind of coffee. And I was like, you know, please give me the evidence to suggest that psychology is not important. Right? So, well, I've got to fly the flag here. And I, I, do, I truly believe and advocate for psychological principles. So a lot of what I shared with you it can be represented by a very uh, simple framework here. Any kind of action or behavior, i.e. how we act, is a product of how we feel and what we think. 
So to understand how behaviors work, we need to understand thoughts and emotions. And that's why we have modules like cognition, neuro, uh, psychobiology to understand brain systems. But then we also have interesting things like individual differences. Right? Why do people behave differently? Is it because of their age, their gender, their socioeconomic status, uh, their personalities? What is it? Right. Um, psychology is fundamentally a science. And by science, I don't mean physics, chemistry, and biology. Those are, uh, well, science is a method. So if we use the scientific method, basically what we mean is that we conduct research. So all these things are actually evidence-based. It's backed up by research and, and we try to study. So we have a module on, on uh, research methods, uh, which is fundamental for, for students to ease you in, to help you understand how to do research, right? And then there are a couple of other uh, courses, uh, social psychology and developmental psychology, as, as Ling Ling shared. Those, I would think, are more application-based as well. So it's heavier on the application side, which is probably what you are looking for. Uh, I'm just going to skim through this a bit in the interest of time and the QMA. I think roughly you, 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 you could get a feel of it. Um, I just wanted to say that Psychology is very applicable in today's world. Um, how so? Check this out. I think psychology is everywhere. You know, but if you're talking about the clinical field, you have research, healthcare, mental health, animal behavior. Right? Although animal behavior is uh, not a very, very popular field, it's called comparative psychology, but that's still considered uh, quite clinical. Today, the education system and schools are looking seriously at issues of mental health, mental well-being. Teachers are burnt out, mind you, not just students, not just parents. And I would like to extend further and say, are the principals burnt out too? So much so that they can't empathize with their teachers. Sorry if you are a principal, it's trying to be real. Right? Um, a lot of people say that Oh, employees are, are burnout, they are stressed, healthcare workers are stressed because of COVID-19. I have a very, very interesting question. Are politicians burnout? They can't say that. Imagine your ministers come out and saying that, hey, you know, I, I need psychological first aid. I, I'm burnout. They don't get the word. They suck it up and they got to continue with their work. But my point is, are they psychologically tired? They might be, and, and so who is attending to them? I think education and school, uh, it's, a, it's a big minefield out there because it deals with children, it deals with adolescents, and of course it cuts across social and family services too. Right? Families being distressed, lots of things going on, uh, relationships are hard to maintain. It's always easy to get into a relationship and say, I love you, you love me, but when the problems come out, then uh, I love you becomes something else. Business and marketing, some of you may be in this field. Uh, I think psychology plays a huge role today in, in changing consumer patterns. I, at, in, in, in organizations, for instance, um, organizational patterns, transition from, from work from home to work from office, resistance to change, people saying that, hey, you know, if I can do my job at home, why the heck do you want me to go back to the office? Like, what's your justification? Are you just a, a puppet? That the government say do A, you do A. I ask you to jump, you say how high. Kind of thing, you know, they, they start challenging. And I think organizations are not ready for that. They don't know what to do. So can psychological principles help to mitigate the problem? Uh, sports psychology, we don't have that module. Not many partner universities have this, but I think sports psychology is up and coming. Uh, you know, it's about athletes' well-being. Today, people forget about athletes' well-being. Of course, how to forget that? I mean, how to focus on their well-being? You're getting paid millions. Shouldn't the millions be enough to address your well-being issues? Maybe that's how the politicians are keeping their mental health in check. But you see, it's not the money thing. We, we, we should also focus on how competition, for instance, can create uh, challenges, right? And then, of course, the area of forensics, prisons, uh, etc., so I think that's another big area on crime, safety, 
security. Recently, you you probably have read quite a lot of news on, you know, I think the the, the number of sexual offences in the country has has sickened me, and I think it's probably about time we have a sex offender registry. But that's not for me to say. But the next time, if I run for parliament and I be a minister, please vote for me. You know, uh, I think the area of security cannot be taken for granted, and they're looking very hard into employing psychological principles into this. Uh, my point in showing you this slide, I think whatever you are doing now and whatever you think you are going to do, uh, having a, a qualification in psychology is going to bring dividends to you. Maybe not in the short term, but definitely in the near future, uh, I would say.